Eat more fruits. Fruits are good for you. Fruits are nature's sweet treat. This is the chorus sung by many physicians, myself included, and fruits are good for you. It's true. Until it's not. Here's the reality about fruit. Many diabetics are surprised to learn that not all fruits are created equally when it comes to sugar content. Sure, fruits are healthy. They have lots of health benefits like containing essential vitamins, antioxidants, minerals. They even have fiber, which can actually aid in the regulation of blood sugar. But if you're diabetic, you have to be careful because some fruits can hit your blood sugar harder than a candy bar. If you are diabetic, you can eat fruit, but you must be careful to choose the right fruits. Choose whole fruits, fresh fruits, fruits with a low glycemic index. Do you know what a glycemic index is? Don't worry, we're about to talk about it because today I'm giving you seven high sugar fruits to avoid if you have diabetes. Keep watching. Listen, I love talking to you and having these conversations through my videos, but you know what else I love? Talking to you one-on-one. -on -one. So if you would like to have a consultation with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do provide a telehealth concierge service, and I can talk to you from anywhere in the world. We have a conversation, a video call. I do a full history. I give you a first opinion. I give you a second opinion, and we can talk about kidney disease. But remember, yes, I'm a board-certified nephrologist, but I've also been board-certified in internal medicine, pediatrics, and obesity medicine. And so there's a whole lot of subjects that we can cover, and we can cover them one-on-one -on -one from anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. So please, if you're interested, click the link in my description, and let's have a telehealth concierge appointment. I'm Dr. Frida. As we get started, please give us a like, and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already, because I'm about to give you some evidence-based medical information about which high sugar foods to avoid if you have diabetes. So if you do have diabetes, you already know, it's important that you maintain normal blood sugar levels. And you do so generally by avoiding excess carbohydrates, avoiding excess sugar, and making sure that you have a balanced diet with good amounts of fiber and protein. Now, if you're a diabetic and you do constantly have high blood sugar or hyperglycemia, you know that you can have complications like amputations, heart disease, poor wound healing, and remember, diabetes is the number one cause of kidney failure. It's the number one cause for me seeing patients in my dialysis units. Let's go over a couple of definitions. Glycemic index. What in the world is a glycemic index? Well, the glycemic index is a measure that ranks food from a scale of 0 to 100, and it measures how rapidly a particular food causes a rise in your blood sugar. If a food has a low glycemic index, then it is slow to cause your blood sugar to rise. If a food has a high glycemic index, then it causes your blood sugar to rise very quickly, okay? So yes, the glycemic index measures from zero to 100, and 100 essentially represents pure glucose. An example of a fruit with a high glycemic index, watermelon. I know I just made every diabetic in America mad. But don't worry, there's more to the story. Watermelon has a glycemic index of about 75, okay? And remember, 100 is the highest. So yes, watermelon can cause a rapid rise in your blood sugar. But then there is another term called glycemic load, which puts more into the calculation. Okay, the glycemic load takes into account not only the glycemic index, but it also takes into account the servings of carbohydrates. So using watermelon as an example, yes, watermelon has a high glycemic index, but if you calculate how many carbohydrates are in each serving of watermelon, it's actually pretty low. So when you calculate the glycemic load for watermelon, even though that index is high at about 75, the glycemic load is low much less than 10. And so in order to calculate the glycemic load, you take the glycemic index, you multiply it by the servings of carbohydrates, and you divide it by 100. And so if the glycemic load is 20 or higher, it's considered to be high. If it's between 11 and 19, eh, that's medium, it's moderate. 
But if the glycemic load is 10 or less, that's considered to be low. So while watermelon has a high glycemic index, it actually has a low glycemic load. I know, it gets complicated. But here's the simple fact of the matter. The glycemic index is still a simple and useful way to rank how fruits affect your blood sugar. In fact, according to the Shanghai Women's Study, of the women who had the highest glycemic indexes in their diets, they were 21% more likely to develop diabetes mellitus type 2 when compared to the women with the lowest glycemic index. So we will be using the term glycemic index as I talk to you about which high sugar fruits to avoid if you have diabetes. Number one, overripe bananas. Why are overripe bananas a bad choice if you have diabetes? Because of the starch to sugar conversion dynamics. Okay, overripe bananas have a glycemic index of between 56 and 75. And this is high because remember, the scale for glycemic index is between zero and 100. And this high glycemic index in overripe bananas is due to hydrolysis into glucose and fructose. And these sugars can send your blood sugars into high spikes, making it very difficult to control your blood sugar. A medium banana has about 14 to 15 grams of sugar and 27 grams of carbohydrates. So yes, it can make diabetes control complicated. But don't worry, don't cry for me, Argentina, because you know I have a healthy alternative. Apples, yes, 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 apples. Apples are a good choice because they have a glycemic index of only 36. And here's the key. Apples have high fiber. They have pectin. And we know that fiber helps to slow down the absorption of glucose into your blood. And so if you eat apples due to their pectin fiber, they can actually help to regulate blood sugars. Mm -hmm. An apple a day might keep me away. But I doubt it. I'm still here. Number two, watermelon. Yes, watermelon does have a high glycemic index of between 75 and 80. And it has about nine grams of carbohydrates per serving. And so if you eat a lot of watermelon, you really can cause yourself to have high spikes in blood sugar. We discussed earlier that there's some nuance when it comes to watermelon. Yes, watermelon has a high glycemic index, but it also has a low glycemic load of about five or six. And that's because the serving size of the carbohydrate is taken into account. But here's the thing. You have to be careful about that serving size because the serving size of a watermelon is about one wedge. How many people eat just one wedge when it comes to watermelon? Not me. At any rate, Consult with your doctor, your endocrinologist, consult with your registered dietitian, because if you're diabetic, then perhaps you can have some watermelon in moderation and avoid a spike in sugar, but you definitely want to make sure you're not having large amounts of watermelon because the fact remains that it has a high glycemic index and it is a fruit that you want to avoid in large amounts if you have diabetes. So what's your alternative? Here's your alternative strawberries. Ripe strawberries, ripe. Y'all know I love strawberries. It's like the most nutrient-dense fruit we have. Strawberries have a glycemic index of only 40. Plus, they have other health benefits. They have fiber. They have antioxidants. They can actually help to stabilize your blood sugar levels. Strawberries are also loaded with vitamin C and polyphenols, and they can enhance your insulin sensitivity. I am Dr. Frida. I'm an MD who has earned multiple board certifications, which means I like to talk a lot about a lot. And I'd like to personally invite you to join me on Mondays at noon Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. We do a Medical Monday where I break down all of the hot health topics in the headlines and I give you a fresh take you won't get anywhere else. I make sense of the stories and I give you evidence-based medicine. And because it's live, you get to interact with me back and forth. You get to ask questions. You get to answer questions. We have a very good time. So please go ahead and grab your lunch every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And let's make Mondays your healthiest day of the week. Number three, pineapple. 
it is with a heavy heart that I put pineapples on the list of high sugar foods to avoid if you have diabetes. Now, if you know me, if you've been following me, you know that I love the health benefits of pineapples. They have bromelain, which really has just excellent anti-inflammatory benefits. But the truth of the matter is that pineapples also have a high glycemic index. Even a fresh pineapple has a glycemic index of between 51 and 66 and 16 grams of sugar per cup. And then if you start talking about canned pineapples, okay, especially ones that are canned in sugar, they have a glycemic index of up to 94 and they have 25 grams of sugar per half a cup. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? There's a high glycemic index when it comes to pineapples, especially canned ones, and this can cause a destabilizing of your blood sugar if you have diabetes. I have an alternative for you, oranges. Oranges actually have a relatively low glycemic index of about 40, and, and oranges are loaded with soluble fiber, which can help to regulate your blood sugar. Do you ever have follow-up questions after watching my videos? Or do you have questions about your personal health that you'd like to ask me? If so, you're in luck because I now offer a telehealth concierge service where we can do a full consultation from anywhere in the world. Click the link in my description or visit drfrida.com. Number four, grapes. Ooh, don't be mad at me. I know you love grapes. I do too. But grapes have a high fructose load, plus you can fall into portion pitfalls. So here's the thing with grapes. They have a high glycemic index of about 56, and they have 23 grams of sugar per cup. That's a lot. And because grapes are so tiny and tangy and delicious, you can really get into trouble with portions because you can pop one in your mouth or 10, or 20, or 30, and before you know it, you've really had a huge serving of this high sugar fruit. What's a healthy alternative? Blackberries. Blackberries are an excellent alternative. Okay, first of all, they are also delicious, sweet, tangy, tart. Okay, so they're a pretty good substitute. But very importantly, blackberries have a low glycemic index of between 25 and 30, and they only have seven grams of sugar per cup. In addition, blackberries are loaded with fiber and antioxidants, and so of course that's good for helping to manage blood glucose control. Blackberries also have anthocyanins, which help to improve endothelial function. Number five, mangoes. Yes, these sweet, sweet, tangy mangoes. This is another high sugar fruit to avoid if you have diabetes. Why are mangoes a bad choice? Because of their glycemic profile and metabolic implications. So just one mango fruit has 36 grams of sugar. And you know that's a lot of sugar. Combine that with its high glycemic index. The glycemic index is between 51 and 60. And so if you consume this sweet fruit, then you will have very high spikes in your blood sugar very quickly, okay? You're, you'll absorb the glucose just really rapidly, and you know that's difficult to do and maintain good diabetes control. Don't worry, I have a healthy alternative, blueberries. Yes, blueberries are tangy and sweet and tart and delicious, just like mangoes. Here are some blueberries. Look, you really can't go wrong with any of these berries. But blueberries in particular have a glycemic index of 28 to 40 and only 7 grams of sugar per serving. They're also loaded with antioxidants and blueberries are high in fiber, which you know helps to slow down the absorption of glucose. So if you have diabetes, please get very familiar with these berries because they are a healthy alternative. Did one of my blueberries just roll away? No, it didn't. Anyway, blueberries are a healthy alternative if you have diabetes. What's your favorite low glycemic index fruit for a sweet treat? Please comment down below. Number six, dried fruits like raisins or like the dried cranberries I have here. Here's the issue. When you have dried fruits, they're dehydrated so water is removed, and that gives you a higher density of sugar per serving. So a handful of cranberries will have much less sugar than a handful of dried cranberries. Because why? 
they're more concentrated. And so you really have to be careful because it's easy to eat a lot of these dried fruits, which can really give you a rapid increase in your blood sugar levels. The glycemic index of dried fruits is pretty high also, up to 64. And so you need to look for another healthy alternative. And guess what? I've got one. Fresh figs are a healthy alternative. They have a lower glycemic index than dried fruits and then dried figs. Their glycemic index is about 35 and they have eight grams of sugar per medium-sized fig. The fact that they have more water content means that it slows down the absorption of sugar as compared to dried figs. Fresh cranberries are a healthier alternative as compared to dried cranberries. They have a lower glycemic index of about 45, which certainly can help to slow down the rapid absorption of glucose that you'll get with dried cranberries. Fresh apricots are another healthy alternative as compared to dried apricots. Fresh apricots have a lower glycemic index of about 34 and about three grams of sugar per apricot. They have a greater water content than a dried apricot, which again, will help to maintain a more stable blood sugar level. So you see, we've got options. Even if you are living with diabetes, you've got options. Number seven is not going to surprise you. Sweet cherries. You know these sweet cherries, the kind that float in Shirley Temples or in different little drinks that have umbrellas in them. Sweet cherries. It's almost a shame that they call them uh, an actual fruit. Listen, they should call them candy. Why are sweet cherries a bad choice? Because of the sugar to fiber ratio. It's atrocious. These things are loaded down with sugar and not that much fiber. They have a high glycemic index and there are about 18 grams of sugar per cup when it comes to these sugary cherries. You know this is more like candy than fruit, but don't worry. You know we have alternatives. Raspberries, yes. Do you notice the theme with berries? Yeah, these berries tend to be pretty good. Raspberries have a nice amount of fiber, which we know helps to slow down the absorption of glucose into your blood, so that's good. Raspberries also have antioxidants, and they're sweet, and they're tart, and they're delicious, just like cherries. So if you have diabetes, please avoid these red, devils in a red dress of sweet cherries, and make sure you have berries as your alternative. Which high sugar fruit on this list caught you off guard and why? Please comment down below. There you have it. Seven of the high sugar fruits that can get you into trouble if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes or if you're trying to avoid diabetes. But don't worry, I didn't make this video in order to upset you. I made it to empower you because I recognize that I have some fan favorites when it comes to fruits. Just remember, knowledge is power. As long as, as you know that these fruits have a high glycemic index and they might cause a spike in your blood sugar, then you're empowered to make certain decisions. You can avoid the fruits altogether, or you can be very, very careful as far as your serving size and have portion control. Or you can also, if you want to splurge and have a little sweet treat, you can make sure you pair it with fiber or pair it with protein or pair it with something that's going to slow down the absorption of that sugar. You see, knowledge is power. That's what I'm trying to do here. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Also, make sure you click the notification bell so you'll be among the first to know when I release new videos. I give you evidence-based information so that you can be your own health advocate and so that you can share the information with the people you love so they can advocate for their health as well. As always, I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.